Today, I want to show you some film photographs I shot a couple weeks ago in Hokkaido, Japan. So, seeing as I'm continuing to work during my time in Japan, Meli and I planned to actually book a proper holiday for a week right at the beginning of the trip. And so, we had a trip to Hokkaido, scheduled for our second week in Japan. Hokkaido is the northern Japanese island, that really big one at the top. It's Japan's biggest prefecture by the way, and home to one of the snowiest cities in the world, its capital, Sapporo. We wanted to stay in that part of Japan to catch one last week of winter in the north before staying in Tokyo for spring. And so, on the 9th of March, we made our way up north to stay our first night in this random small town close to Sapporo, from where we'd head on to the east of the island. I had brought along a couple rolls of film to shoot with either the Pentax K1000 or the Olympus XA3, which were the two cameras I decided to bring with me. Our first afternoon and evening in Hokkaido didn't really give us the most welcoming impression. Anyway, on the next day, we caught a train to head to a city called Obihiro, where we were going to stay our next night. It was that train ride when I finally loaded up the Pentax and got my first shots. The train was taking us through some forest and wide winter landscapes and I was tempted to capture some of the moody atmosphere we had on the train ride. Here is shot number one, and I really like how this one turned out. By the way, this was my first time shooting Fujifilm Premium 400, and this is already looking great. I really like how the atmosphere was captured and how the mountain fades away into the cloud. It's an age-old subject I've always been shooting, so it feels good to have gotten it again. Also, of course, I'm fond of the train's window framing the scene, adding to the context of the shot. This second shot, on the other hand, is kind of random, not really that interesting. In Obihiro, we spent our time just walking around and exploring the area, and of course I got some photographs, this one being one of the first ones, which was just a straight photo down the road. It's very simple, but I still kind of like it because it just shows an impression of the city and it shows what Obihiro is like. You've got the piles of snow everywhere, the wet road also looks quite cool. And then let's continue with some other shots which are basically the same type of shot. They all aren't really that different from another and I think the first one would have done it actually. This one is kind of cool maybe because the area is a bit different and we've got that one person walking through the middle of the frame. Then I got this shot because this is another thing that is actually quite typical of Japan. Japan is very compressed, very dense, and so the spaces in between houses sometimes become ridiculously small, like here. This is about this much. All the more interesting I thought it was is how the snow just piles up in there because nobody's really going in there with a shovel to clear the space, so sometimes we found these spaces in between the houses that were full of snow, and so I wanted to document one of those. Then this shot is it's a bit boring, it's kind of cool but still boring. <laughs> I got it because I wanted to document this place which in the night I think would be much cooler but I kind of just photographed it then because we were walking past it. This is just a small alley full of bars and restaurants which is quite cool. Yeah, but I think it probably would have been better to get that shot at night. Then there's this shot, which again just isn't really special, but it's just part of a series. I wouldn't say that I particularly like it, but there are some details in this photograph that I appreciate. For example, the window that is stuffed full with stuff. <laughs> this is something I briefly explained in uh, the previous video from Japan, that I've often seen this in Japan, windows that are stuffed, and so this had a bit of that. And then the last shot of that first day in Obihiro is this one here, which again, it's not special, I, th I just see it as part of a series. I don't really know if I'm ever going to use it for something, but I just wanted to document what the place looks like, and I think this does a decent job at that. Just as a standalone photo, I think it's kind of boring. Then, on the next day, our travel continued and we left Obihiro to head towards our next stop, a small town called Furano. On the way, however, we were going to visit a place called Tomamu, which has a ski area and a gondola that also is available to walking visitors like us. So, here's a shot I got of that bus ride to the ski resort I just showed you. I was shooting some expired film by the way, it's called Kodak Farbwelt, which I think was probably just a German rebranding of Kodak Gold. Something I like about shooting with the Olympus XA3 is that it's automatic, like a point and shoot, 
yet you can still raise your ISO manually so that you can overexpose your film, which allows for better results with expired film. Something I however didn't consider is how much the snow will put off the light meter. Many of these shots look pretty rough in the shadows because the exposure wasn't long enough, which I'm guessing is because of the snow. The camera must have thought that it's extremely bright and exposed for the snow, not for the shadows, which is quite a pity. Most of these shots don't look as good as I hoped they would turn out, but I've learnt my lesson. Next time I'll only shoot expired film in the snow with a fully manual camera. Anyway, we took the gondola up the mountain and explored the area where I got quite a few shots actually, this one being one that I really like. I like how this shot is split in the different layers. So you've got the foreground, which is just the white mountain in the foreground, that then slices diagonally into the background, which is just the mountainscape, and then the last layer is just the sky. But in the foreground, you also have this additional layer, you could say, of the two gondolas, which I waited for to be in exactly that position, which I just think works the best. It gives the shot some extra symmetry and structure, which I find quite pleasing, so I'm really happy with this shot. And then this photograph is less structured, but I still really like it. It's very simple actually, and it was just supposed to document the icing on the branches here, which I think works out quite nicely. Then being on an observation deck, I of course had to get a photo of the landscape. However, I think it turned out quite boring because it's literally just the landscape split in the two layers, the top and the bottom, so it's not that interesting. However, I got a variation right after that, which I think is quite interesting, and that is this shot of the two children looking down into the valley. So now we've got the landscape, and it is a landscape shot, but with a foreground that I think attaches a certain emotion to it, because you can see the two kids that are wondrously just looking into the distance, and it kind of captures that feeling of being a child and being fascinated by this. Not that I wasn't fascinated, I was just like them. But I think just photographically speaking, this element makes it more interesting than the photograph before, so I'm really happy with this one. Then here are two photos that I got out of the gondola while riding up, but I don't think they worked out that nicely. The high dynamic range of the film seems to be working against me in this case, because I think the foreground is just so bright that it's sort of distracting. Here is possibly one of my favourite photographs from the trip definitely one of the favourites from this day. So this is down in the parking area, which we also spent some time exploring as we were waiting for the bus that would take us back to the train station. And I spotted these three parking area workers. At this time, most people were either already up on the mountain or, like we were, on their way home already. And so they didn't really have much to do and were just standing there chatting. And I really liked how I was able to frame this shot of them, surrounded by these piles of snow. But what I think is the best actually is that forest at the back and then the two towers that come up behind them because I found those two towers quite interesting because they just don't really fit into the landscape and I think the way that they pop out of the forest here kind of just suits that weirdness that I wanted to capture. Then here's another shot which I quite like. I just think it turned out visually very appealing. I like the bright look that I was able to get here and how the forest is looking and the... actually it's quite harsh lighting, but thanks to the snow the light has bounced around everywhere so the shadows just don't look that dark. And of course something else I like about this photograph is the mirror itself because if you look into the mirror you can see the road that comes here and I think that's a nice detail. Then here are two more simple landscapes which I don't really think are particularly special or noteworthy, but then I got this photo, which I also like a lot. This was up on the mountain, just outside of the top station there was an area where some skiers were passing, but the walkers like us were allowed to just explore the area. And this guy went off the track up the hill to explore that area, and was not having the easiest time coming back down. It wasn't that dramatic in any way, he was doing fine, just he was noticeably struggling a little, and so I tried to capture that moment. And I think I caught it quite well, this posture of his just shows that he was struggling in that moment, and in the composition it works very nicely. I just like the placement of this person, so I think many things in this photo just worked out very nicely, and the fact that this is ju not just a person looking around, but actually doing something a bit more interesting than that makes the photo sort of humorous and interesting in that sense. Then here's another shot just of the branches, because I thought those were so beautiful. And then come the shots I got on the expired film, which all look a little rough. As said, I think the snow just put off the light meter quite brutally. This shot actually doesn't even look too bad, it kind of has this dreamlike feeling. It does look rough, but at the same time it has an interesting look. 
Here is the same shot I got before with the Pentax on the 50mm, this time 35mm lens from the Olympus. I definitely think the other one worked out much better. And then here are two shots from the train station from where we intended to continue our travel to the next town. However, I say intended to because this is a whole story for itself. As we were riding the bus that took us here, the bus driver told me that the train that we are wanting to catch is stuck, stuck still in Sapporo, which is one and a half hours away from where we were. And uh, he was explaining that that train is probably not going to come anymore. And so we were stuck in Tomomu. Here are three shots I got while we were just waiting around. This here is actually the waiting room to take shelter in case of hard conditions. In the end, we decided to take the train on the opposite side, which was going to take us back to Sapporo from where we could get to Furano, but the long way around. So on that train ride, I got some more shots. Here's one that I like a lot actually. This guy had been in the resort as well and come onto the train with us. I don't know the exact situation, but he seemed somewhat important to the family he was with, as if he was leading the trip. What made me so curious about him was that he was dressing around with a bunch of luggage. It appeared to me that he was responsible for carrying all the luggage from the whole family onto the train, so obviously after that he was quite out of breath, and that's when I got the shot of him after he had gone from thick winter jacket to t-shirt to cool off again. His posture says it all, I think. I really like the moments I was able to capture, and I love how the lighting conditions complemented the scene and shines a sort of soft spotlight onto the subject. Here's another shot from that train ride, which I like a lot. An elderly couple next to us were falling asleep, and I thought it was sort of cute and it looked cool the way the sunlight came through the window, and so I got the shot. After that, I got some more shots, but nothing really good. So that long route we had to take to Furano turned out to have its positive sides. I enjoy riding the train anyway, so it wasn't too big of an issue, however still an inconvenience. But it was only thanks to this alternative route that we got to see the sunset and blue hour while riding the train through the snowy landscape of Hokkaido, which was so beautiful and so I got a couple shots. Sometimes we passed road crossings that had traffic lights, that's what these vibrant colourful lights are in this photograph. The last train of that day was a small local train that took us through the countryside to the little town that we were going to stay at. It was such an interesting atmosphere in that train. Outside was dark, and a couple other people were riding the train with us, each with their own reason and their own activity on the train. Two young people were gaming on their phone. One casually dressed guy and one smartly dressed guy were both just passing out and taking a nap. And one young guy was writing a text of some sort on his laptop, but then decided to get up and head to the front to look out the front window. At last, we successfully arrived at our destination, and on the next day, we visited another ski area, but just as walkers again. Before that, however, I had gotten a couple shots from our accommodation and of the town, however, most of these didn't really turn out very nicely. Some due to the wrong exposure of the expired film, and some simply because I photographed something that turned out not to be that interesting in the end. But hey, that's part of the process. Anyway, the next day we headed to another ski area where I got some more shots, this one being from the bus drive right at the beginning. It's looking very rough again from the expired film, but actually it kind of looks cool as well. I'm not too sure about it. 
Then here are some more shots. I got this one inside of the building of the gondola where I found three vending machines as you see everywhere in Japan and so I thought it was a cool subject to photograph. Then here are some more shots all looking a bit rough. I really like the idea of this one but kind of not the execution. So what I like here is that we've got the view outside of the gondola but also what is going on inside the gondola as the foreground, especially that person on the left looking out. I kind of liked it. I like the framing but not so happy with the execution. Then here are just some more somewhat random shots. Oh, and then this photo I really like. So as you can see, this is the top station of a chairlift. You can see out the left window that I'm right beside a chairlift here. And you know, at the top of the chairlift, if you've been to a ski area before, there's always this little hut where the person controlling the chairlift, these people usually sit here. But on this day, that chairlift was not working and so that hut was empty and I just thought it looked quite cool and so I just peeked in there and got a photo because nobody was there anyway. And then here are just some more photos, nothing really special, nothing that I could talk too much about. All of these are very mediocre. I got a lot of photos that I think are fine but not good and so here are some of those. This last shot is another example of a shot that I think just could need two or three stops of extra exposure because the forest at the back is just looking quite grainy. I tried to push the brightness a little bit and it just looks a bit rough. As you can see, by now we weren't in the ski area anymore, but we had come down to the road where our bus was going to come to that would take us back to the hotel. And we were just walking around exploring the area, I think, because we still had quite some time before the bus comes. However, then it started to rain. And so we took shelter at the bus stop and then rode the bus back to our accommodation. I got these two shots from that bus ride, which I quite like. I shot some more photographs the following days, but these didn't turn out that special sadly. They do however document quite decently what we were up to and just some aspects of the town. Then on the next day it was time to move on to the next town and so we caught a train that was going to take us back to Sapporo and on that train I of course got a lot of shots, maybe a little too much, you're going to see. So here's a nice shot that I got of the window, at least that was the idea, that I would shoot um, out of the window with this uh, person sitting to the right of it if I see that correctly. Yeah, it's a bit dark and blurry so I can't see it so exactly so yeah that's part of what I was going to say that <laughs> this photo just yeah, it's cool, but I don't know. And then here is a very similar shot, and that is what you're going to notice um, from this train ride. I got a lot <laughs> of this type of shots. So, I mean, you know that I am very much into the concept of subframing. I really like to do that. And this was just fantastic because I could get landscape shots through the window of the train meaning I could subframe them, which would make it interesting, but I got a little overly enthusiastic maybe and shot a lot. So we've got more, even more, even more, even more, even more, even more. And then I got this shot with the person in the foreground, which I think is cool, but again, it's just too dark. You can't really see anything. <laughs> So then here is one more shot, which is basically exactly what I've shown you so far already, but I put this at the end because I wanted to highlight this as the one that I'm most happy with. I think this one worked out the best. I got the lighting inside, I've got a good frame, and I think the view outside is also interesting with the mountains in the background. So I think this one just worked out the best. And then here are two more shots from that train ride in which I shot way too many photos that I like though. So this is inside the train and I just really liked how the sunlight was coming into the train here. Then lastly I got this shot which I like a lot actually because as you know I like to photograph stuff, meaning stuff that characterises a city or people. So as you know I often like to photograph what people have outside of their homes. And in this case this is a variation of that, it's just photographing what people have with them on their travels. And in this case it's a combination of I like what the train looked like, I liked the lighting and I had the bonus of this person also spreading themselves out and having their stuff here and there. And so they've got that water bottle on there and their little bag and I love how the sun just shines a little strip of light onto that bag. And then there's also the hand so it's not completely anonymous so I still got the person whom these things belong to inside the shot which I usually don't have so I appreciate that even though it's just the hand I think it's cool. 
Then, as we were changing trains, I was wandering around the platform while waiting and looked into the train on the other side, which turned out to look pretty cool. And I thought this could have some great photographic potential because the window was quite dirty so that the photo would become hazy. This is the result, and I love how this turned out. The lighting from the opposite window and the diffusion from the dirty window go together so well and add a strong atmosphere. Also, I think the brown colour of the trail with the cooler light from outside adds to this, creating this photograph that feels charged with a certain energy. I really like it. I also got this vertical shot from a different corner of the train, which also looks great in my opinion. After the wait, we got onto our last train of the day, which was a train that was going to take us to Otto, a seaside town not far from Sapporo. What was cool here is that the train ride had a couple segments right next to the sea, giving us a wonderful view to gaze at. So on that train ride, my enthusiasm continued, you could say. Here's a shot that I showed you in video form already of the two people here looking out the window, which I just thought was really cool because you could see them looking out the window and also I got the view itself, which I thought was beautiful. However, the visual side of this photo just didn't work out that well, I think, especially because the left person has a white jacket, which is much brighter than anything else in the foreground. I would have liked to have this in a bit more of a silhouetted look, which is hard if the person is wearing white. However, I got some other shots which I think worked out really nicely, such as this one, which includes much more people, and the focus is of course on the other photographer, so me the photographer shooting another photographer who is shooting the outside. And I think what I like about it is this mixture of people who are used to this route and are just looking outside or even not looking outside, and then the photographer who just like me is appreciating it and trying to capture it. Then here's another shot similar to the one before of somebody in this case not enjoying the view. And then I got this shot, which again is just, um, yeah, not that good. And then, of course, uh, this shot, for obvious reasons. And again. And again. Alright, so <laughs> now I finally shot something else again. In this case, I again quite like it. This time it's just a picture of the locals, at least I believe these were locals. Just riding the train, maybe home. Oh, and then I got this shot, I remember. So. This is more at the beginning of the train ride actually, when the train was quite full, so I was not seated, I was standing actually, and I was standing in front of this old lady who had her hands like this as you can see, and the sun came in there so nicely, and I think this posture of having the hands like this just, um, it had something, something interesting. And then here is one last shot from that train ride, I saved this for the end because I think this is my favourite shot from this particular train ride. So this is just a picture of the people actually I was riding with. I think visually speaking this photo just turned out really nicely and also the context of why I took the picture worked out here quite well in my opinion. So what the Japanese are known for, which you probably have heard of before, is that they sleep a lot on the train. You see this all the time, I've done it as well. And uh, I just love this scene of the couple people, some are sleeping, some are on their phone, and there's just that one completely knocked out, <laughs> just not caring at all, completely knocked out and has her head buried in the suitcase or what that is. I just thought it was a funny scene and had to get a photo. In Otoru, we spent our time basically just exploring the town by walking around and checking out the different areas. Luckily, the sun was out and treated us with some good light, which I captured in a couple shots. Most of these photographs aren't really special, mostly just sort of basic views that should simply capture what the place looks like, but don't really go beyond that. There are two shots though that have a bit more thought behind them. This one I got because I really liked how this one scene neatly presented what Japan is like. What I mean is that this scene is so typical of Japan. There's a small building, another building in the back, nothing unusual, however in the foreground you can see that little wooden box with some traditional objects placed in there. I'm not sure if this counts as some sort of personal shrine, but it's definitely something from the traditional Japanese culture you see here a lot. But then right next to that is a modern vending machine that puts into the picture the two sides of Japan that coexist in this country, which I find quite beautiful. Then this shot I got as we were hanging out on a little tower from where we got a nice view of the area and as I went around the corner here that eye was staring straight at me from the huge advertising print on the neighbouring building. I just thought the placement of the ad when viewed from this angle was somewhat humorous, the way the eye suddenly pierces into me, so I got the shot.
On the next day, we rode the train again to get to our final stop before returning to Tokyo. I got a couple shots on that train ride, but again, nothing special. We went to a place called Noboribetsu, which is actually a pretty famous hot spring in Japan and also known for its unique view of the mountain where 80 degrees Celsius hot water flows down the valley. I finished my last roll of film here. I particularly like the last two shots actually. This one of the view with Meli in the foreground, which I think is simple yet a fun way to picture the landscape in not as of a simple way as just photographing it straight forward. It adds a little context which I find makes it more interesting. On the other hand, the last shot is a view purely of the landscape, however with the compositional focus on that rock in the foreground, which I find makes it better. I love how the composition of this photograph flows, and how the eye wanders from the rock to the stream of water and then up the steep orange wall of the mountain, giving me as the viewer a sense of the depth of this landscape. Anyway, that was the last shot from that trip. The next day we didn't do too much except we headed home to my grandmom's in Tokyo. I hope you enjoyed this little story behind all these pictures and that you liked some of them. I think I might have been a little too enthusiastic and shot a bit more film than I probably should have, but it was very hard to resist. I'm happy with a lot of the photographs I was able to capture, it's just that I think I also got more shots than necessary that feel a bit pointless. Those are of course never completely avoidable, but they can be reduced, and I feel like I didn't do too well in the reduction part. Anyway, I had a great time, and I got some good shots that I'm happy with, and that's the most important in my opinion, so let's leave it at that. That's it for this week, I hope you had a good time. Before I say goodbye, I would briefly like to shout out the lovely people on Patreon that are supporting my work here. Thank you so much. If you're interested in extra videos, Lightroom presets, or physical postcards, you can check out what I have to offer via the link in the description. Otherwise, I also sell prints by the way, if you'd like to support and get a photograph in physical form. With that said, I wish you a great week and hope to see you again soon. Until then, goodbye.